In this tutorial, we'll be creating a realistic, procedural car paint material and applying it to our vehicle. This car paint material will look awesome on both cycles and EV render engines. So let's get down to it. Alright, so the first step is going to be to add a new material to the chassis of our car. So here on the bottom, I'd like to expand this panel. So let's just take it up and we need to switch it to the shader editor so that we can control our materials. So with this chassis selected, I'm going to press click on new and let's add a new material. So as you can see by default, we're having two nodes. We're having the principal PSDF and the material output. All right, so the first step is going to be to work a little bit on this principal PSDF to make it look like real paint. So all you have to do is to, let me just go from the bottom. So I want you to increase this value, the clear coat value to two. So you can see that it starts to look a little bit glossy. Let me just try to tweak a little bit the color. Try to make it dark a little bit to see what's going on here. So that, that is for the first step. Next, I want you to increase the metallic value. As you know, the paint is 100% metallic. So let's increase it, increase this value to something like 0.85. Also, we need to, let me just bring back, make it a little bit white so that we can see what's going on. So you can see the difference here. If we take it to one, to zero, it's going to be a little bit dry. But if you increase the metallic, it's going to look like metal, like actual steel. All right, so that is for the second step. After that, we need to decrease the roughness to something like 0.1. So basically, the, the roughness is going to control how rough or glossy this material is going to be. So something like 0.2 is going to be fine. All right, so that is for the first step. So next, what we need to do is to add those small sparkles that we see on the paint. So to do that, we need to rely on the Voronite texture node. So shift A, let's search for Voronoi texture. And I'd like to connect the color to the base color of our principal PSDF. So if you zoom a little bit back, you're gonna see these cells units. So if we increase, let me try to increase that something around 30. And also to keep up with the performance of our machine, we don't need to increase this scale to some crazy amounts. So instead what we need to do is to scale up this texture, is to bring the texture coordinates and the mapping. So this one's selected, I'm going to press Ctrl T and as you can see automatically we're going to be having these two nodes, the mapping and the texture coordinates. So to have access to these shortcuts, I want you to make sure that you are activating the node regular. So you can go to Edit, Preferences and under Add-ons tab, you can search here for the regular node. So this node must be activated so that you can have access to these shortcuts like the Ctrl T. So for the texture coordinates, I want you to connect the object, which is the chassis, to the vector instead of this generated. So let me just zoom in a little bit. So we're having those sparkles, but they are really small. So what we can do is to reduce the scale. Let me just try to reduce it to something like five. Let's take a look again. Yeah, we have them. There we go. These small sparkles. So what we can do right now is to add the color ramp so that we can control these sparkles. So shift A, let's search for the color ramp node. And I'd like to put it on this line, put it here. So this can be in between the Voronoi texture and the, color, the base color of our principal PSDF. All right, so now we can tweak these handles. Let me just show you. All right, so we can take this black handle and take it all the way to the right side, something like this. So right now, if we zoom in, you're gonna see those nice small sparkles that we got on the Avery paint, every car paint. All right, so the next step is gonna be to add a normal map for these sparkles. So as you can see, our surface is completely flat. So we need to add some bumps to give it that nice effect. So what we can do is we need to convert this Voronoi texture into a normal map. So basically normal map textures looks like this, they are bluish. So we need to convert this Voronoi texture into that bluish color. So to do that, we need to use two nodes. First, we need to use the separate and the combine. So let me just start with the separate node. So shift A, let's add separate color node and let's connect the color to the color here. So to see what's going on, we can go ahead and connect, for example, the blue to the base color just temporarily. So this is how it looks like. So it's still not blue. So next, what we need to do is to add the combine color. So shift A, let's search for the combine color and let's put it on top here. And instead of connecting the blue to the red, we need to connect it to the blue, blue to the blue. So now it looks like a blue map. So if you zoom in, so you're going to see those sparkles. Nice. 
So let's go ahead and use this as our normal map. So we can search for a normal map. Let's put it here. Yeah, let's connect this to the color. And the normal to the normal. So we can just disconnect the color from the base color and let's see what's going on. So you can see that effect. It looks a little bit weird. But all you have to do is just to reduce this strength to something like 0 0.1. Some really small value. So if we zoom in, you can see those the effect of bumps. It looks a little bit bumpy, our surface, which is awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and connect this color back to our base color. All right, so we got that. So now our paint looks much more better, especially from this side. All right, so now what we need to do is to add some kind of a warp effect to our paint. So it's still looking perfect, so we need to add some kind of a distortion, some kind of a warp effect to the paint of our material. So to do that, I'd like to rely on the noise texture. So shift A, let's search for a noise texture here. Also, we can maximize this window. Let me just press Control Space to maximize it so that we can see it better. I'd like to organize these nodes a little bit. So next, we need to connect this noise texture to a bump node. So Shift A, let's search for a bump node. Let's put it here and let's connect the factor to the height. And here for the normal map, we need to connect the normal map to this clear coat normal. So let's go ahead and connect it like this. So Control Space to go back to our car and let's take a look at what's going on over here. So you can see that noise applied, but it looks really terrible. So what we can do first is to reduce this scale to something really low. Let me try one. Or actually, we need to bring that mapping nodes, these two mapping and texture coordinates. So let's select the noise texture and press Control T. All right, I'd like to connect the object to the vector instead of the generated. And for the scale, I'd like to reduce it real down to something like 0.1. Okay, you can see that warp effect here, but it's terrible. So we can reduce the scale to something like 0 0.01. For the details value, I'd like to set it to zero. And here for the bump node, let's set the strength to 0 0.1 and the distance to something real down, something like 0 0.01. Let's press enter and let's check this out. All right, so basically that's it. So this is the process of creating a car paint and apply it to our vehicle. So if you have any questions, let me know. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in future tutorials. Take care. One. Let's press enter and let's check this out. All right, so basically that's it. So this is the process of creating a car paint and apply it to our vehicle. So if you have any questions, let me know. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in future tutorials. Take care.